you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Christine Olson, and I'm a doctoral student at UMass. And as as uh, uh, Stephen so graciously welcomed me, I'm actually here serving as uh, the head of the after school program with the middle school students. So I'd like to invite two of them up here with me right now. So could you guys come up and join me up here? that I have working with me every Monday after school. So could you both say your name for me and what grade you're in? I'm Emma and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Caleb and I'm in seventh grade. So we're gonna have Caleb show off um, a piece of electronics that he's built during the program in a few minutes. But before that, I wanted to start by showing you guys a little bit about what we've been doing in the after school program. So this after school program was started by a partnership with the middle school. So I'd like to thank Lisa Candido, who's here, who helped make this partnership possible. What we've been doing is we've been working with the middle school in a partnership with Amherst Media, as well as with the Vela program, to work together to build an after school program in which students can experiment with technology, uh, build a community of makers. So the maker space and the term maker is something that's not necessarily easy to define. So instead of defining it, we're just gonna show you a bit today about what we've been doing. So we're gonna start with just discussing how we've gone through this program. So the first thing that we did um, as a group together, uh, this is actually a little bit later in the semester, but it's a really fun highlight, was uh, go to uh, Amherst uh, Middle School and have one of the Open Science Maker students who's here with us today and whose device she's going to show us in a few minutes show off exactly what that device does. So what the students were able to do is was able to see these kind of devices that we're going to be talking about in action. In this case we had an aerial balloon photo uh, rig essentially that you can send up into the air and it takes aerial photos from hundreds of feet in the air. So the students and I were lucky enough to get a chance to work with Allie on this and she sent up the balloon over their middle school. So on the left hand side of the photographs over here you see us actually with the tether sending this up into the sky. On the right hand side this is actually more like a before and after photo here. On the right hand side you see us deflating the balloon so that it can be uh, transported. So we're all making some funny faces as everybody tries to push and deflate this helium balloon here. So this is the before and after, but I wanted to show you guys what it looked like when we were actually taking aerial photographs. So the first one, it's a little dark here, but you can see up in the, the, the corner there, all the students laying down in a circle to create a star. So the students got together and tried to find their way underneath the camera so that they could get a nice shot of themselves all laying on the ground. So we did this. This was about 300 feet in the air, I believe, at this point. And as the camera came down, we played a pretty fun game. Do you remember what game we played? Uh, we tried to play, try to, if you were the last one under the camera with the last picture, then you won. So <laughs> we had a nice competition there, trying to get the last student underneath the camera. So as the camera's coming down, we have some more photos here showing the students looking up, trying to stay under it. Because as you can imagine, these balloons are moving around with the wind, so everybody was running around the field trying to stay underneath. This is a little bit closer, so this is right towards the end of the competition we had. And then the final photo is one of my favorites of just all the students looking up, trying to get under that camera for the last shot. So we had a lot of fun this day, learning not only about how to stay underneath the camera for a photograph, but also about uh, how these devices work. It was the one of the first examples of a completely fully functional device like those that we were going to be making. So this was a great opportunity for us. You know, our program really focuses on three things. One of them is focusing on these kind of devices, how we can build them, how we can design them. The second is really looking at how we can learn about programming. So how do we make the devices do what we'd like them to do? And the final component, which is really afforded to us by the great opportunity of being here at Amherst Media, is the ability to have them learn about making media. So we had the students actually have some media training as well. About two weeks ago, we worked with the cameras, um, some of those <laughs> uh, the, that we've seen around the, uh, the center today. But the students actually got hands-on training with learning how to use these cameras. So we have some great shots here of everybody working with Ari, who so <laughs> graciously came and helped us out uh, to learn a little bit more about how we would film. So we really have these three components that come together because we want events like this and media like we're going to be making in the future to really be able to showcase and share what all the students have made. And so 
That's what we're really going to be trying to do with you all today, is give you a sense of exactly what it is that we're doing on these Mondays when we're all meeting together. So we have the lily pad Arduino. I passed one around, an, uh, an example of one, so that you guys could all g get a sense of what this device is. But I'm going to actually pass it over to Caleb, if you wouldn't mind, to tell us a little bit about what the lily pad is and to show us an example of what his lily pad device does. So you can come right here and they can see it. That on. Well, this is a, is a lily pad Arduino. And so what it does is that it This is a lily pad Arduino, and so what it does is that it gives power. Well, the the battery, which is on the back, it gives power to the lily pad, which turns on, which turns on the LEDs, and also, and also, the LED when the um, LEDs are turned on, you have to turn the power button, which is right there, and the and there's a reset button, the red button, but you never should press the button because it reset or erase all your all of your data, <laughs> and um, these two parts is where the um, the um, charger or the computer um, um, thing goes in, and so you could put stuff on it or you could charge it up. And on the back we have a battery. And as you can see, it's not on, but when you turn it on, these lights light up, for example. For example, it looks like that when you light it up. Nice. But all of the lights aren't working properly because I've made a mistake. So when you do it, you have to get some thread and you have to um, sew all of the, the threads inside of the felt in order for it to have a good connection. And so the so the Arduino and the LEDs are able to work. And so Okay. Now why don't you tell them what, what you were specifically trying to make here? Well I was supposed to make a phone case which folds in half and then it gives off light and you can just put your phone inside of it and walk around with it. I think it's pretty useful. And considering that people sometimes lose their phones. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think this is a very useful, very useful thing. And I think it's supposed to be used a lot. And so what are your next steps? Well, what I was going to do is I was going to glue these sides together, the insides, so they would stay together instead of falling apart. And I would put, I would slip the phone inside, and I would also, hmm, yeah, I would turn the thing on. I would turn the um, lily pad Arduino on and the battery, and the lights would come on while the phone is inside. Great, thank you. Now, as you can imagine, sewing these together with this, this is conductive thread that he used here is a pretty time intensive process. So these students have put in a lot of work. I'm going to show you a little bit more about their designs and then some of the other projects that students are working on. Sadly, we couldn't get all of the students here to join us today, but I'm going to show you a few more projects that are in the works. So we have Caleb's phone case. This is the design. This is before he got to, to this um, prototyping uh, level here. He, he started out with just drawing it out and trying to plan out exactly what he wanted it to look like. So we had it here, and you guys got a great demonstration. Another project that people were working on was uh, one of the students was hoping to create a hat that would make lights go across his, uh, the brim of the hat. And so in this case, he, he was hoping to sew it onto one of his favorite baseball caps. Unfortunately, he didn't have the hat with him one day, so he problem solved there, and he instead just made a strip that he's now going to apply to whichever hat he decides. So here you see an example of, um, of uh, the, the lily pad being used as just a, a light up. So instead of having it blink, it's just all lit up. So if, you, if we had a chance, the lights were kind of bright here to see what Caleb had done. Caleb actually programs his so that it comes on for five seconds, goes dark for three seconds, comes back on for five seconds, goes dark for three seconds. And that's something we learned in a, a programming class about how you would program these. So in this case, this one's just lit up all the time. It's just a nice bright hat. 
We also have a student working on an interesting project about a wrist, a wrist watch using the same technology so that each of the lights will come on at a specific time and in doing so it kind of works as a timer on his wrist. And so this is, this is some of it in progress again as well. So this is uh, just the beginnings of the project but it shows you a sense of you know, what this process looks like. You have to actually sew each component on together and then you have to program the LED lights. The iWatch has a competitor. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> so we have some more fun projects in the works. This is one of Emma's projects that she's working on here. Um, so really in the spirit of maker culture, which is to take things apart and put them back together in fun and creative ways, we have a unicorn and a llama. So we have a unicorn llama here that she's designed and is working on lighting up the, uh, the, the horn on the llama there. And then we have two other projects that are in the works, uh, a bookmark that's going to light up and a glove that's going to have light up fingers. So these are just some of the fun projects that students are working on right now with learning how to put together these devices, program them, and then hopefully share them by making media. So the activities we have planned for to come, the first of which may be a demonstration on 3D printing. So we're trying to get a 3D printer in the space, a little bit about the SketchUp that you're going to see some more of the other students talking about today. So the students will get a demonstration of that. Another is an introduction to the Arduino. So we're going to start working with the Arduinos, which again are something that you're going to see the students that are presenting later in the evening showing. So their students are going to get a, a chance to, to tinker with these as well. And finally, of course, is the media making. So I want you to look out for the media that we make from this program. We're going to start filming much more often every day to get a sense of what this process looks like for the students. So I would like to thank you both for joining me up here today. And I would just like to congratulate all the students that are working with me right now. This is really hard work, and it's new for all of them, and they're doing an excellent job.